how consciousness leaves a spirit of poverty, lack, and struggle on your soul. And when you try to leave, you will have a lasting residue that you will need to cleanse from your mind, your mind, body, spirit, and soul. I'm Queen with Soft Eye Boutique here to discuss something very serious about the conscious community. As you all have seen, I have pivoted my message in this page to really reach out to black girls and women who want to receive this message to help them either avoid or escape not only the black conscious community, but the black community in and of itself. This is not a soft life or divestment uh, movement message. This is something that is reality. I always tell you all on this page, I am a licensed Louisiana attorney. Nothing on this page should ever be considered legal advice, nor should you ever act on any legal matters regarding any video that I post. I have to say that even though Soft Eye Boutique has nothing to do with me being an attorney, but as an attorney, I really don't have any anonymity. And also, I want to share my story about how being black community minded and going through law school while I while I was knee deep, well, <laughs> submerged in the black conscious community and how that affected not only my finances, but the type of clients that I was getting and the way that I was practicing law. So I want to share my story so you all do not end up in the same situation that I did to have to go back and really backtrack and remove this from your mind, body, and soul. So the spirit of poverty, lack, scarcity, and struggle, it is real. It is an attachment that takes hold of your DNA. It is ingrained and embedded upon your soul. A lot of us are born into it. It is a disease. It is a real disease, okay? It is a genetic disease. So when people talk about sexually transmitted diseases, I am not just talking about chlamydia, gonorrhea, trick, herpes, HIV, or anything, the mycoplasma, urea plasma, BV, or yeast. I'm not talking about those, okay? Mental illnesses and spiritual illnesses are sexually transmitted. Because when you have a baby, you have to have sex. Or, you know, some people do IVF or something like that, but it's still a sexual process that must, must take place in order for those uh, chromosomes to merge and create a human being. Thus, you have what a lot of people term generational trauma and generational curses. So it is very real. And what is peculiar about my situation when it comes to the spirit of lack poverty scarcity and struggle what is that i am like the first or second generation that was either not born on a plantation raised on a plantation or didn't have really anything to do with sharecropping that's much more through my paternal side because although my dad wasn't born on a plantation, he lived on a plantation as a, as a little boy. My maternal side, not so much through my direct maternal side, but through my maternal paternal side. So the woman who gave birth to me, her dad was essentially born into some type of form of sharecropping, which um, he's since passed away, but that, that was traumatic in and of itself because he just wasn't a good person um 
he just wasn't a good father or grandfather at all. So I was essentially born with this disease and this attachment upon my DNA. And if you all are not into epigenetics, I highly advise that you start doing research on it because that is where you get the scientific proof of what a lot of people like to term and coin generational trauma and generational curses. So these are actual embedded attachments that we have within our DNA. And it's it, it can be undone, but it is a process. It is a process that you have to do. Is a, a some people like to call it a spiritual process, some people, you know, scientific process. If you've been following this page for a while, you know I deal in quantum mind science. So for me, it's more of a spiritual quantum um, un untangling of my DNA and removing these attachments. And so why I speak out about the so-called black community and the so-called black conscious community is because if you were like me and you were essentially born into that spirit of lack, poverty, and struggle, and all of that, the conscious community really drives it even deeper, okay? And even if you're not in the conscious community, but you're just really black community-minded, that really drives it even further deeper within your DNA and kind of sort of cements it in there. And that is what triggers that being carried on throughout your bloodline. So I don't want any of you all to end up in that situation. So for me, how it really negatively affected my life is it ruined my finances, okay? So I actually do have a reference point. So thankfully, I have a reference point of a time in my life where I didn't even consider any is having issues with finances. So I started working really young around the age of 14. I started in fast food, then I moved into doing gas station work. But because being I was really intelligent and I still am, I received a lot of grants and scholarships and things of that nature and financial aid. So money really was not a question for me. Also, I had really good credit as a young lady. And I also remember during that time, like when I was like between the ages of 18 and 22, that was a time in my life where I was, you know, forget the sky is the limit. The universe is mine. I never worried about anything. I didn't even have a car. I really didn't even know how to drive during that time so i never really thought about it because there were just guys just willing to drive hours away from where i was to literally just bring me down the street seriously because they just wanted to be in my company they wanted my companionship and i wasn't even exchanging sex with them so it was never like an intimate situation and you know they would just hand me stacks of cash and you know, buy me lavish gifts and do all these things for me. And a lot of people thought that I was exchanging sex for it, but I wasn't. And I just let people believe whatever they wanted to believe. And I just never, it just never crossed my mind, even though I was born into it. So I, at that point in time in my life, because of my educational trajectory, I had a chance to break free from it. And so I actually took the wrong turn around like 21, 22. That's when I came in contact with the conscious community. So the real peculiar thing is at the same time that I became, I came in contact with the conscious community, I actually came in contact with the spiritual advisor who I am dealing with now. And I allow the people of the conscious community to tell me, oh, that was quack science. It wasn't real. Um, you know, you need to essentially deal with us. That That's really what I was told. So I started, you know, dealing with them. Because I'm like, I'm sorry, like, what is hypnosis? Like, what is these people talking about? And look where I am now, <laughs> right back 
at square one but thankfully i'm getting the help you know that i need and that i deserve and that i'm worthy of but as soon as i took that i came into that fork in the road and i went down the path of just really going in because i always was about the community always about that if you watch my video about the whole overdose thing and how I, with loyalty how i found out what that really mean just watch that video but when I came into the conscious community, I really like was bam, 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 like really, really going hard. And the crazy thing is, it was not a situation to where I was giving those people money because I was not. That was not the situation. It just, I don't know what happened during it. Now I know it was a, a spiritual and demonic force upon me, but my money just got real, real funny during all those years and my finances went down my credit went down and it was because i was in a state of mind to where you know how people when you when you listen to these videos of people talking about how they sober and how you know they they, they used to crave the drugs and their mouth used to water and all of that type of stuff. That is what I was experiencing. Like when I tell y'all about the rage and all that, I was like, I had to crave the struggle. I had to. I was like, I need that. I need it because I felt that was that connection that I was having saying, yeah, you know, my money funny. I can't pay this. I'm, I'm just paying this before the lights get cut off. And yeah, you know, the man doing this and they're trying to keep a sister down. And you know, it's hard out here for black folks. And you know, we got to do what we got to do to get an independent black nation all about the liberation. And we got to take up arms and we got to do this because you know, they always trying to stick it to us and we got to stick it back to them. Got to rob Peter to pay Paul, you know, just straight up insanity, straight up insanity. But it was a craving that I, I had at that time because I was not aware. I was not aware that I was inflicted with this serious mental disease of craving struggle, craving lack, being, you know, having a scarcity mindset because I felt that that's what that was to be a black woman, a liberated and free black woman i felt that that's what it was and that is not the case and i don't want you all to go down that path because that is what it's going to lead to there's no if ands or buts about it you don't have anybody who came out of there with a good story the women and the men who did there's always some foolishness behind the ones who got money drugs scamming pedophilia all of this type of stuff okay and i also you know the disease had me so sick to where i was like you know a black person who got money legitimately they're coon they're sellout they're sambo so i was saying like that can't be me because if i get this money like this then i gotta i gotta be a seller i gotta be a coon i gotta be a sambo you know, and then I started aligning myself with people who, if they were getting some type of money, even though I wasn't involved in any of their dealings, it was 100% illegal, you know? So it leaves you with a very serious spirit upon you of poverty, lack, scarcity, and struggle, and it is going to ruin your bloodline it creates mental illnesses it creates physical diseases and it obliterates and annihilate it will annihilate your bloodline i need y'all to listen to me and listen to me clearly because i don't want you all to end up in the situation that i am currently in thankfully because i have the law license a lot of things I'm able to get myself out of because I don't have to pay for an attorney. I don't have to do anything like that. But it's just straight up insanity to sit here and say, I have a law license and I was going through all of these financial difficulties. Even though clearly I'm making a life for myself, but my bills, I have, you get, you have real bills when you become an attorney. Real six-figure bills. 
So like, that's really what I'm talking about here. Like some real serious things <laughs> that you have to pay for and you have to deal with as an attorney. And nobody from the conscious community is going to be there to help you. When they get in trouble, they're going to the same people who they claim that they hate. The Caucasian people. Because they did, that's who they go to. Especially if it's a criminal matter. That's the first people they go to. So it's just all hypocrisy. It's all straight up hypocrisy. Okay. And so when you start to, when that fog starts to get lifted, that cloud starts to get lifted off your mind and you realize the type of the state of insanity that you were living in, it's like, man, this is serious. I was sick. My mind was diseased. To really sit up here and believe that these people care about my financial security and my financial independence, especially as a black girl or woman. That's why when you see these domestic violence cases, it's always because the girl and the woman did not have money. That's how they end up in those situations. They don't have any money. They're not financially independent. So <coughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's insanity. I don't want you all to go down that path because that's a hard path to come back from, but it can be done, especially if you're single. So my message really is for the single girls, the single and childless girls and women, black girls and women out there. Cause I don't have children. I, I think maybe the last time I was in a relationship was like 2009. So I don't, you know, truly single for a minute. So I, you know, I don't want y'all to end up in that sit in those situations because that is what's going to happen to you. So, like I said, I'm not talking about swirling. I'm not talking about divestment. I'm not talking about soft life. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about you need to straight up be about your paper legally. And cut all the rest of the BS. Because when it comes down to the get down, I guarantee you, them same people is always going to trace back to some money with them. With the community in a so-called conscious community. Because that's what that's what it is. Whether you feel like money is an energy, a tool, or whatever, it's still an energy or tool that you need. So it all it all boils back to those energies and those tools. Okay. So do not deal with them. Show me some black woman who filthy rich are truly financially independent that was born in and stayed in or joined the conscious community or stayed black, black community minded and they financially free or they filthy rich. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Those, the, those communities, they tear at your soul. They inflict you with the spirit, the disease spirit of poverty, lack, scarcity, and struggle. And once you start to break away from it, whether you were born in or whether you joined on your own and you're trying to leave, there's going to be a residue up on you. But you can cleanse it, okay? I started to realize because I was having issues with certain cases even though I was like really getting, I, I was getting paid, you know, some people didn't pay, but I, I was still getting paid for some cases that I had. And I was just wondering like, what in the world is going on? Why am I having these issues with these clients and all of this? And I realized that that residue, that residual spirit was still up on me. So when people were finding me, they could see up on me. That, you know, that's, I still have that, you know, I, I still have to go to some type, go through some type of struggle or something like that. So I found myself in predicaments where I don't argue with clients. I'll just fire them before I do that. But I found myself in numerous positions to where 
I was like really struggling, you know, with clients or I found myself in positions to where I'm looking up, not even realizing that I enrolled as counsel of record in court for people who didn't even didn't even pay me a down payment. And I didn't even realize it until after the fact. So I had to really go deep into meditation and prayer in order for me to withdraw from these cases. Because that's not how I, you know, thankfully I was able to withdraw, but that's not how I practice law. When I go into court, I'm going into court prepared for whatever's going to come. So I was having clients put me in positions to where I wasn't, not because of my doing, but because of their doing. Then I'm in Louisiana in the South. Come on now. You know, thankfully I'm, it don't mean anything, you know, with black attorneys and black judges that that means absolutely nothing. I need y'all to understand that. When you see a black licensed professional, it means absolutely nothing. They're literally just black. That is it. That is it. Okay. So I was finding myself in those positions, finding myself in, in, in situations to where I realized like, I do not care about this client. I don't care about this case anymore and, and things like that. And then when I really sat down, and I really just really went through like, how did I end up in this position? It was because that residual spirit was up on me. And so I was, you know, it, it wasn't a situation where I, I was having ease into my life. Or having a lavish, steady, dependable income that's in, consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. I had to struggle. And scratch and survive, you know, to win these cases, which I was winning. But that pulls a lot up on you, out of you to do that. Well, out of me, it does. And it did. And I said it was two situations that I recently had was actually three. OK, three recent situations that I had with three cases. That was those were my rock bottoms. Those were my rock bottoms. You know, this this is not what this is. So thankfully now going forward, I'm really clear about who I'm going to work with. Like I actually, there's specific questions that I talk to people, you know, during the consultations about to really get their frame of mind. And if they have that residue upon them or that spirit upon them, I'm not working with them. I'm not, I'm not dealing with that because that's going to affect my quantum reality. You know, my force field is, it really is. It's going to be a true quantum entanglement at that point. So I don't want you all to end up in that situation. It's real. It's going to happen. You know, a lot of people, they are afraid to speak out about these things. And at one point in time, I was afraid too to speak out about it, but I had to. And you know what? When I started speaking out about it, some people, they don't comment on my posts, but they'll find me on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn and they'll send me a message. And they said, oh my God, you know, I thought that I was the only person, you know, who, who kind of realized that. And, you know, thank you so much for speaking up. So y'all, it's real. I'm here. I'm here to help you get out of the conscious community or avoid it by any means necessary. Or just being black community minded. That blind loyalty to blackness is going to get you run up and done up. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Date myself with that. But it, it, it really is. And I just really don't want y'all to go down that path. Please don't do it. Please. Like be about your paper, young lady. Be about your mental health. Be about your physical health. Be about joy, love, peace, happiness, and most importantly, ease. You do not have to struggle. You do not have to live in a state of lack. You do not have to live in a state of scarcity. Okay? You do not have to live in a state of struggle. You can accept a life of ease. It's a reality out there. You just have to shift your frequency. And it's possible because I'm doing it. And then at one point in time, I've lived it. So I know how it is. You know, I have an actual blueprint of, you know, 
just carefree, you know. When people talk about this hypergamy and all this type of stuff, I was doing that back then without even laying down with anybody. I didn't even know that that was a terminology for that. I didn't. It was just like, oh, well, this guy wants to be in my, you know, reality. He's going to, oh, oh, I was falling on me. Let me push this back. I guess that's a sign <laughs> that we going hard. Hold on. Okay. There we go. So, you know, back then it, it was, I didn't even question it. I'm like, well, if a guy wants to talk to me, like, why isn't he treating me like royalty? You know, I, it was even before I even thought about calling myself queen, I was being treated like a, a young queen, a young princess. So it's, it's just ridiculousness. It's just straight up ridiculousness. And I don't want you all to go down that path because you're going to have to do a lot of course correcting. And I'm trying to catch y'all. For those who don't have children, I got to catch you before you have that. Like, please don't do that. Don't, don't do that. You know, whew, I'm going to do a separate video <laughs> about, about that. But I just wanted to hop on here and share that with y'all to get my message to the black girl and the black women in the wilderness of North America and all over the planet Earth. So that's a spin on the conscious thing. So if you know where that come from, you know where that come from. Queen with Soft Eye Boutique.